to you on a subject uh, called or entitled Wisdom for Guidance. Wisdom for Guidance. I know that it's our year to shine. But if we are going to shine, we are going to have to have the guidance that enables us to then shine. It is then very important for us to know how life works. And the life that we are living in, it works in, the, in what I call wills, or W-I-L-L, the will. And as uh, you are operating and living, there are three kinds of wills that you are living in, and that you and me are living in. Number one, you can live in what I term the perfect will of God. This is the original plan of God for your life with no alterations, with no other permutations. Perfect, straight. That is the original mind and thought of God concerning your life. Then the second will that you are able to live in is what I call the permitted will of God. This is what God then permits because of our hardness or because of our stupidity where we make choices that maybe are not aligned to the perfect will of God. Then there is the third will that I call outside the will of God. You can, you can, this is, this is a will that God has got nothing to do with and that God has got no agenda with you being in there and it is outside the will of God. And as you must walk in, in wisdom, you must know what the will of God is. You must also understand how these wills interact in our lives as we want to do what God wants us to do. If I take you to the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 39, Jesus now praying, he says, My father, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass over me, but not my will. Everybody say, not my will. Not my will, but your will. So, so Jesus understood the will of God. And he understood that you've got your own personal will. And sometimes your own personal will and the will of your country, the will of your family might come against the will of God. But if you are going to shine in 2021, if you are going to achieve what God wants you to achieve, if you are going to become what God wants you to become, you are going to have to live according to the will of God. If we knew the will of God, there will be less pain in your life, there will be less failure around us, there will be less losses, there will be less regrets, there will be less suicides. If people knew the will of God, if you knew the will of God, there will be more success, there will be more joy, there will be more impact, there will be more relevance, there will be more peace, there will be more victory. Now, if I take you to the book of Isaiah 48, verse 17 to 18, it then reads, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should. If only you had paid attention to my commandments, then your well-being would be like the river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. I want you to see that God is interested in leading us. He is interested in how we behave. He's interested into uh, he's interested to what we pay attention to. And he's saying here in Isaiah, pay attention to my commandments. If you do that, then you will have the life that you want. You will be like a river. You will be like the waves, making the waves of the sea in righteousness. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, guidance is everywhere. Guidance is everywhere. God created a guidance system. The North Pole, South Pole, and that uh, magnetic, uh, you know, field around the earth is a guidance system. It guides the birds. I was reading one day, how do the birds know where to fly to? They use the magnetic field of the earth and it guides them to know where to go and to know where to fly to. 
I, if you look at aeroplanes as they fly, even if they are on autopilot, they are being guided by some guiding system. If you look at missiles that are being fired at targets in warfare, they've got a guiding system. Am I talking to somebody here? Even in the days of old when ships or when uh, cargo uh, ships were going, they would use the stars as guidance systems. There's what is called the North Star. It guides and shows you the direction where north, the north is all the time. And you can go and those who study astrology will know what I'm talking about. And I want to say that God never created a world that does not need guidance. And you as an individual, you also need guidance. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? Now, Google is, has given us Google Maps. What does it do? It guides you to your destination. And a lot of people, they are just living life without guidance. How are you going to achieve? How are you going to arrive at your place of, of, of your wealthy place? How are you going to arrive at your place of, 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 of impact, a place of relevance without the right guidance? But I want to say that guidance is out there. Everybody is receiving guidance. The world is being guided by something or by someone. But I, and, and I can tell you that the world is being guided by, number one, the world is guided by the flesh, appetites, natural appetites, personal inherent appetites. They guide you. Uh, they guide you. Uh, even the Bible says that a man's hunger will drive him. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? And sometimes your hunger will drive you to steal your, 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 that, that, that's, that's your flesh and world and, 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 and natural appetites. You are also driven and guided by what I call worldly systems. This is the environment that you are living in. This is your uh, friends and your influence. We now have got social influencers and your kids are dressing like somebody that you do not know. They live with you every day, but they do not copy you. They are copying somebody on TikTok. They are copying somebody on on Instagram, these are called social influencers. They are guiding people, and but what are they guiding them to? And also then there's the guidance that comes from devils. Now Paul speaks, expect, uh, 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 speaks very clearly and is very explicit in Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 3, which reads, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions, and sin in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. That's what was guiding you. And the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is at work, the devils, that in those that uh, in those who are disobedient, all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of the flesh, natural appetites, and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature de uh, deserving rest. So you, everybody is being guided by something. But as a child of God, you need to be guided by God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6 then reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding uh, 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 in all your ways, which means every area of life. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. So God wants, is interested in the paths, is interested in who is directing you and he wants to direct you. You. Am I talking to somebody here? Why, does, why do you need to have guidance in your life? Why do you need to have guidance? Somebody will ask me and say, Pastor, and say, Apostle, or Doc, why do I need guidance? Now, here's the, uh, uh, the reason why you need guidance. Number one, Proverbs 12, verse 26. There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. And I want to tell you something. There are so many ways that in your right, in your own natural thinking, in fact, in your best thinking, they lead to death. I am sure somebody here has done something that you thought this thing will make a profit. You go that way and you lose money. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You even asked somebody out and if you thought it was going to work, this was going to be perfect, it seemed right to you, but it led to death. It led to pain. 
it led to loss. So many people are suffering because they trusted their mind. They disregarded the need of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we need God because in our own or by our own, there are ways that we think are right, but those ways will lead to pain and death. Am I talking to somebody out there? If you go to the book of Acts chapter 16 from verse 6 and, and 10, this is the story about uh, Paul and it reads, Now when they had gone through Phagia, a region in Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. I want you to understand that they were forbidden to preach the word in Asia. And I then realized that even when you've got good intentions, you still need to listen to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just because your idea is good, it does not mean that you now have to exclude God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You might even desire to do something scriptural, but you still need the guidance of God. Am I talking to somebody out there? So, so many people are desiring to do good. But even the good things that you are desiring to do, you cannot do them by yourself. You still need divine guidance. Am I talking to somebody there? That's why the Bible then says, many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the purpose of the Lord that prevails. But I was born on Monday, but I was not born last Monday. And I have seen that sometimes God has got plans, but they are not prevailing in my life. And the reason why those plans are not prevailing is because I am not following his guidance. So the plans of the Lord will prevail in your life when you are following his guidance. Am I talking to somebody out there? A lot of people are saying, oh, the Lord has deserted me. Oh, the Lord has... Listen to me. God's plans will not prevail until you allow him to guide you so that those plans can come to fruition. In the year 2021, it is our year of shining. God has got plans for you. But for those plans to come to fruition, you are going to need God to guide you step by step. That's why it then says that the steps of a righteous man, what, what, what are the steps of a righteous man? The steps of a righteous man is uh, are ordered of the Lord. It means that every, every step that you make, every decision that you make, every, every no that you say, every yes that you say, every yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have got some guidance system. You never do anything with your own mind. I don't care whether you are a genius. I don't care whether you are an A student. But in this life, you are talking to an A student himself. And I made some serious, 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 serious problems. At A level, I was the best student in my class. I re I've received accolades and received prizes at universities. Some of you, you thought prizes, they finish at, at high school. No, at universities, when you, when you ace the exam, they give you a book prize. I have a book prize, but I still made wrong decisions. But I then realized that I need God to guide me. And if I need God to guide me, you need God to guide you. Am I talking to somebody here? So I have, I've, we rush too much. We do not trust God. We need to take it easy. We need to start asking God. We need to act like David. David, he used to ask God, shall I pursue? Are you hearing what I'm saying? He would not just say, I think it's a good plan. There are so many good plans that look good to a man, but lead to death. You have to have an, an understanding that in this season, we cannot do things without God's guidance. We have to ask God, shall I pursue? Shall I pursue? Shall I do this? Shall I marry? Shall I buy? Shall I do? Are you hearing what I'm saying? We have to ask God. Asking God is not for emergencies only. It has to be our daily life if we are going to become what God wants us to become. We cannot wait to ask God when we are only in trouble. We have to pursue God and ask for his guidance as a daily thing. The morning when you wake up, say, God, guide me today. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? The day you, every when, when you are flying out of the country, God guide me in my trip. When you are going for that interview, God guide me. When you are about to read for your exam, God guide me. When you are about to preach, God guide me. Don't think and depend on your understanding. We have become so carnal. We have become so, so arrogant that we have kicked God out. But I want to say to the church this evening that God never saved us to make himself absolute in our lives. God saved us so that we can, we, we can depend on him. We should depend on him. And until we come to that maturity and understanding that we must depend on God on every little thing, great and small, big and small, important and not so important. We must depend on God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So Psalms, 24, Psalms uh, 27 verse 11 then says, Teach me all, teach me all your ways, O oh Lord, and lead me in a level path before my force. That's the other reason why you need guidance of God. You've got force. The word force, it means you've got enemies. You are living right here, right now. Let me tell you something, if you didn't know it, you've got enemies. You've got natural enemies, people that hate you, and you've got spiritual enemies, demonic spirits assigned against you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And, and, and so you cannot afford to live life without the guidance of the Alpha and the Omega, the one that knows your past, the one that knows your future. If you refuse God's guidance, you are saying, I can face my future by myself. Am I talking to somebody? But remember, you've got foes that are planning, that are orchestrating, that are, have, that, that are more, that are older than you. Demonic spirits are not your age. They are not 21 years. They are not 35 years. They are not even 100 years. They were there before Adam was created. Am I talking to somebody? They know your family history. They know their weakness in your bloodline. And you want to go against them with your own might. You must be out of your mind. I need guidance. And in 2021, we need guidance. And I have seen so many people going through problems that they could have avoided if only they'd asked God. So God longs to guide you. In, uh, in Psalms 48, verse 14, he says, For this is God, our God forever and ever. He will guide even to death. God wants to guide you. In Exodus 33, verse 14, it's, it reads, And he said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. I like what Moses did. He said, if you are not going to go with us, I am not moving from this place. I want some Moses of our day who will say, Lord, if you are not going to guide me, I am not moving. If you are not going to speak to me, I am not moving. But we have got some people who are moving in all directions without any direction. Where are you going? And then you come to ask and tell us, Christo, things are not working. Yet you have been guiding yourself and you don't know which direction you need to go to. We need to go back to God's guidance. Am I talking to somebody? Psalms 31 verse 3, it reads, For you are my rock and my fortress, and for your name's sake you shall lead me and guide me. So God wants to lead us for his name's sake. Are you getting what I'm saying? He doesn't want, to bring, he doesn't want his name to be put into disrepute. Because of you. Now you. When God leads me, he's getting the glory. Because he leads me to a glorious place. He leads me to a place of shining. He leads me to a place of victory. And when I am at a place of victory, guess who gets the glory? He gets the He's doing it for his name's sake. We are disappointing God because we are refusing to be guided. No wonder that your life is such a mess. No wonder there's so much chaos in your life because you're refusing the guidance that comes from God. So some of you might be asking, so pastor, all right, now I want to be, I, I want God to guide me. How does God guide me? There are six ways that God will guide you. And number one, 
God will guide you by the Bible or by Scripture. The Word of God says in Psalms 119, 119 1, verse 105, Your word is a lamp unto my feet. It's a light unto my path. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it reads, All Scripture are given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instructions in righteousness. So all scripture, the Bible is meant to, to guide you. All our guidance is based on scripture. When anything that comes to you is are going against scripture, we will not do it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because all the other guidance systems that I'm going to be talking about, they are based and founded on scripture. That's why the word of God needs to dwell in your hearts richly. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because when you are in a circumstance, you don't have time to open your Bible. You don't have time to open your iPhone. You don't have time to open your iPad. It is the hidden word in your heart that will become the guiding system. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? Now the Bible then says, for Proverbs 13, verse 13, he who scorns instruction will pay for it. But he who respects commandments, the word, is rewarded. Right now you are paying for it. A lot of people are paying for it because they, dis they scorned scripture. They said scripture is old-fashioned. They said it does not apply in this age. Who told you? The Bible says this earth will pass away, but my word, but my word will remain. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The word is eternal. Are you hearing what I'm saying, somebody? Woo! I'm just preaching myself happy right now. You know, Christianity is, is not a buffet. You don't go and choose and cherry pick which word you want to hear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have to get the whole thing. You have to get the whole word. You have to eat the whole scroll. There are things that I like about scripture. Can I tell you something? I don't like fasting. I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? I would rather do have, have Christianity where I don't fast. But I have to fast because scripture told me to fast. Am I talking to somebody? So I don't have to, I don't cherry pick what I like and what I don't like. I, scripture guides me. So the first thing that guides you as a Christian is scripture. Whatever you are doing, is it founded on scripture? What is the word that supports what you are doing? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number two, you are going to have to be led by the spirit of God. The Bible says in Luke chapter 4, verse 1, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Romans 8, verse 14, As many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, as you can see, if the Holy Spirit can lead, we have already noted that demons can also lead. Now, the question is, are you a son of God? So, you are not just a son of God because you have received him according to uh, John chapter 1 verse 12. As, ma uh, to, uh, to, to as many that received him, he gave them power to be called the sons of God. There's another qualifier that is important, part B of being a son of God. He's, he's not just receiving him, but he's also being led by him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, do we have sons of God in this house? As Wisdom City, do we have sons of God? So sons of God have received him, yes. But sons of God are also led by him. We are, must be led by the Spirit of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? John 16 verse 13 says, but, he, and, but when he, the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will speak not of his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. I should remember at one time, and uh, this is something that happened and continuously happens in my life, but uh, this is something that I, I uh, a testimony that I, uh, I usually speak to demonstrate how God speaks to you, how the Holy Spirit speaks to you. I still remember one time we were going to church with Pastor D and we are about to go out of our house and then the Spirit just spoke to me in the inside and said, you know what? Just get a plastic bag, pack some basics, from our pantry. So we took this and, and we packed some basics and we went and gave this family. And when we gave that family, that family, when I gave the wife, the wife started to cry. And the wife said, as of this morning, we ran out of all the basics that you gave us. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we have to be led by the Spirit of God. We have to listen to the voice of the Spirit. And, 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 and some people will come and say, Pastor, I've never heard the voice of the Spirit. But it, could it be? Because the Bible says, the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. If you are not hearing, maybe you are not listening. Your world is too loud for you to hear what God is saying to you. Because our God is a speaking God. If you open the Bible, all he ever does is speak. From, the, from Genesis chapter 1, all he is doing, he is speaking. He doesn't do anything, all he does is to speak. So if you are not hearing a person who always speaks, who, who his business is just speaking, I don't know what you are doing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But So you must pray and say, Father, anoint my spiritual ears. Father, let me hear from you. Because God is, is a speaking God and God will speak to you he'll cause things to be known the other time I saw a pastor and, and, and God just dropped this name in my spirit and, 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 and God said go and give that person 300 US dollars so I just came and said you know what God told me to give you 300 US dollars the pastor started to cry and he said you know what the school fees of my daughter is short with 300 dollars because God speaks and God gives direction. And I'm, and, I'm, and, and I'm about to speak to you and say God is willing and the Spirit of God is able to lead you in the right areas, into the right area of business. He is able to lead you into the right job. God is able to lead you by the Spirit of God into the right place where you don't make mistakes, where everything is moving. Am I talking to somebody? The third way God guides us is by counsel of mature Christians. Counsel of mature Christians. The Bible says, uh, uh, and, 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 and I have to repeat that, mature Christians. You don't just get counsel from anybody. Some of you, you are getting counsel from peers or, or same people at the same level or people below your level. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But the Bible says in Proverbs 10 verse 14, wise people store up knowledge. Wise people store up knowledge. Where do they get the knowledge from? They get the knowledge from mature sense. And you get this knowledge from books. You get this knowledge from counsel. So I've been counseled by people that are long gone. I've read their books. When I read a book or when I read books, I don't read books, just one book. I read the whole library. But I still remember, I read all the books by Mike Medock. All of them. I read all the books by Dr. Mensa Otterbill. I read all the books by my bishop, Bishop to the Bismarck. I read all of them. I read so that I can get their mind. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I may not have met some of them, but because I've read their material, I then store it up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whatever I have stored up is my arsenal when I face the issues of life. Am I talking to somebody? But some of you, you do not know what to do because there's nothing stored up. So when you face issues of life and when we look what you have stored up, your pantry is empty. Your arsenal of wisdom is empty. Your arsenal of direction and, and solution is empty. You don't have a library of solutions. So life beats you. Life hammers you. Am I talking to you somebody? Am I talking to somebody here? So you need, so, 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 so this, it, it's so important. The Bible then also says in Proverbs 20 verse 18, plans are established by counsel. So 2021 is going to be a success because of counsel. By wise, by wise counsel wage war. Everybody has got a deficiency of wisdom in some area. You cannot be a know-it-all. Yes, you might be smart, but smart Alec, you do not know it all. You might be a mathematician, but you are bad at English. You might be good in agriculture, but you're not good in geology. You might be good in theology, but you're not good in vaccine. Those who got ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. You do not know everything. So you are going, you are not a Rambo. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You've been watching too many movies. You are not a Rambo. You are not a Lone Ranger. You are going to have to get some counsel from somebody. You need some people that are going to counsel you. So what have I done? I have put some people that are my board of counsel. They are like board members. They do not know it. But these are people that I run ideas, that I run issues. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Before I make a life move, I've got some people. They are not very many. They are about three or five that I run issues. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? I've got some mentors that I run issues. When, even when I was changing my job this year, I, didn't, I just didn't change a job because of the money. I had to run it through some people. You make life changes. You make life decisions by yourself in your one room. And you think you know it all. You want to surprise us. But all the people that try to surprise other people usually are the ones that are surprised. Get counsel. The Bible then says in Proverbs 18 verse 1, a man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise counsel. When you see a man who is going against counsel, they start to say, ah, inside of number one, they don't want to seek people. They isolate themselves. Anybody who is isolated, you are not just isolating yourself, but you are isolating yourself to be hit by the devil. Am I talking to somebody? Get counsel. Number four, there's what is called conscience. 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 God will guide you through our conscience. If this is your spirit man speaking. Are you hearing what I'm saying? John, First uh, John 3 verse 9 says, whoever is born of God does not sin, but he for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he, is, he has been born of God. So that which is born of God is your spirit man. When you got saved, your flesh did not get saved. Your mind did not get saved. What got saved is your spirit. And that's what is speaking and that's what, and, and that spirit man speaks to you and God guides you through a, your conscience, your spirit man. Am I talking to somebody? And you can trust your spirit man. You can trust your conscience. Why? Because it is saved. You should not trust the conscience of an unsaved person because it's a dead spirit. But when you are saved, when you have received Jesus, that spirit is new. It's born again. It cannot sin. It cannot tell you wrong things. And I can tell you, most of you, you have heard your spirit speak to you. There's a decision that you wanted to make and your spirit told you no. And you went against it by facts and reason. And at the end of you, you then say, but I felt it. But I knew, kind of like knew it, it was wrong. You ignored your spirit, your conscience. This is what is written in 1 Kings 19, verse 12. And it says, and after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a small, still voice. There is this, everybody has got a small, still voice that speaks in the inside of you. This is where you hear like a voice speaking to you. Everybody has got some voices speaking to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And one of the voices is the voice of your spirit. And it tells you, and I want to teach you, there is a law, what is called the law of the blink. The law of the what? The law of the blink. This states that when you hear an issue for the first time, your spirit man will pop who tell you whether it's good or bad, whether you should go with it or not go with it. That first impression, that first intuition, that first feeling, that first feeling that you get is your spirit man speaking. But what do we do? We disregard it. We disregard it. And we suffer the consequences. Number five, God leads you by what I call common sense. I define common sense as sound judgment in practical matters. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God, when you get saved, you don't have to blow your mind away. Your mind and your brain is still necessary. Remember what I said with our common sense, we get it from when you are born again. Your common sense, you get it from the word of God. That's why I tell people in Wisdom City that the most important thing that you need after receiving Jesus is the wisdom of God. And where do you get it? You read the book of Proverbs. Get the book of Proverbs. Read the teachings of Jesus. When you've got that, you've got spiritual common sense. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking? I'm preaching good. I'm preaching good. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All right. So, so what you need is, is, is because common sense can be good common sense or bad common sense. And, and in the Bible and scripture, we see a person that had bad common sense. Saul had bad common sense. We were told yesterday by Apostle Bijawa about Saul not, uh, you know, using his common sense and saying, no, I, 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 I reserved the, the, the fattened cows. I, 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 I reserved them so that I can offer them. He was using common sense. But if he knew Bible common sense, which, had, which says sacrifice, uh, uh, obedience is better than sacrifice, he would have obeyed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, so the uh, 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 Lot used common sense. He was told to choose. Then he went towards Sodom and Gomorrah. And you know why? Because common sense sold him that that land was, was better, it was fertile, it, the grass was greener. But he went in the wrong direction. Because if your common sense is not being guided by God, that common sense can lead you into trouble. But God leads you into common sense. Just like Jesus. Jesus used common sense. The, the, the Bible tells us that Jesus was preaching. And as he was preaching, the crowds were pressing against him. Even though he was God, if he remained there, he was going to be squashed. So what does Jesus do? Jesus talks to Peter and says, Peter, can I borrow your boat so that I will start to preach in the boat and the people will not press against him? That's common sense. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You need some common sense, child of God. You need some common sense. Just like uh, David, David was anointed. He was anointed by Samuel as king. He knew he was king of Israel. But still he allowed Saul to live and to rule until he died. He did not say, listen, I'm, a, I'm the one who is anointed. Wait for your time. He used common sense. Am I talking to somebody? We need to use common sense. Paul used common sense. When he was about to be executed in Jerusalem, he then said, I'm a citizen of Rome. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I am I'm now applying. And he then applied law and said, I have got the right to appeal to Caesar in Rome. And that's how Saul ended up in Rome. He used common sense. You can die in Jerusalem if you don't use common sense. Am I talking to somebody? Christians need to use common sense. Woo, I'm preaching good. I'm preaching good. Now, I have seen so much common senselessness among Christians. We believe anything. We are naive. We are simpletons written in, in Proverbs 5, 6, 7. You simple ones. And wisdom is crying in the streets to give you spiritual understanding and spiritual common sense. But God guides us through common sense. The last way that God guides us is what I call circumstantial signs. Or sometimes I call them the way of favor. One, one way God directs you. You can start playing now. One way God directs you is that God directs you in a way of favor. Can I speak to somebody here? That sometimes you just have to look where your favor is flowing. Because God directs you in your line of favor. Am I talking to somebody here? I've seen so many people stop their area of favor and start their area, another, another business where they are not flowing in favor. But God is leading you. Follow your favor. Follow your stream of favor. Follow the road where doors are opening. So Paul says an effective door of ministry has been opened even though Oh, there is adversaries. The adversaries will not matter if you are in your way where God is opening doors of favor. Am I talking to somebody here? So every Christian, every day you must wake up, you must ask and say, where is my favor? And when you know where your favor is, you will know where God is guiding you. Because God will not show you the whole way, but God will just show you the next step of favor. God will show you the next step of favor. God will show you the next step of favor. When you follow that step of favor, God is guiding you. But I've seen people stop, uh, you know, they, they stop businesses where they are making money and start businesses where they start losing money. I've seen people, they stop churches where they were getting blessed and start to go to churches where they start getting cursed. I've seen people stop relationships where that elevated them and start new relationships that destroy them. Am I talking to somebody here? God leads, leads you and guides you by favor. Sure. Now I declare as an apostolic leader of this house, that 2021 is a unique year. That as a church, God is guiding us and we are learning as a church to, and, and uh, how God guides us. That each one of us, from the little ones to all those that are grown up, they will know 
that God is going to be speaking to you. We now come against every spirit of downness in your spiritual ears. From this day mom, from this day onwards, you will hear the voice of your conscience. You will hear the voice of your common sense. You will hear the voice of scripture. You will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit directing you. I pray that you may yearn and earn that guidance from God. Allow God to guide you. It's your year to shine and shining we will. But if we are going to shine, we are going to shine as God guides us into that, into that glory place. Am I talking to somebody? Nothing is stopping you, Wisdom City. As you, you allow God to guide you, you are shining this year. And I pray, let it become faster than later. Let it not even wait until the end of the year, but immediately after this sermon, may you start to hear and experience the guidance of God in the name of Jesus. But before I close tonight, I want to talk to that somebody who has not yet received Jesus. The first way in you can be guided by God is to receive him as your Lord and Savior. And if you want to receive Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer after me. If you had lost your way, if you had thought that God had deserted you and you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, I want you to also to pray this simple prayer. And after you pray this prayer, if you are in Arare, we are at 55. Come and join us. If you are far in another country, go to the nearest Bible-believing church. But let's pray this prayer. We call it the prayer of salvation, where we call to God to guide us. Shall we pray? Pray after me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner and I cannot save myself. I now ask you to come and be the Lord of my life. From this day onwards, guide me, order my steps, be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you prayed that short prayer, you are now a child of God. You are, if you had backslidden, you are now restored. You must celebrate. Find a Bible-believing church. Find a good pastor. And start to live a life that is guided by God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much. And tomorrow, we will have Bishop Uroy. Same time, be there and be blessed. Amen and amen.